Hi dancers, hope you're all okay and are safe and well and are still working hard from home. Each week I'm going to upload a different YouTube video um, which is based on your GCC dance course. Some will be theory and some will be practical based. So we're starting off with a theory this week. You have been sent this work through at home to have a look through but obviously I haven't been able to speak you through it. So throughout this PowerPoint we're going to be discussing our next theme of work which is artificial things. Okay, and you're going to be planning your mind maps exactly like we would normally in school and revising from this PowerPoint. So on the YouTube link that you can see below, you will need to type that into your browser and that will give you full access to the full video of artificial things. I couldn't embed it in this PowerPoint because it is 20 minutes long unfortunately. So if you want to pause the PowerPoint here, go on to that YouTube link and watch the video first, by all means please do that because it will help you understand the PowerPoint when I'm talking about the different scenes as we get further through this PowerPoint. So I'm just going to pause here for a minute just while you get the YouTube link down and then we'll continue. Okay, so first of all, we're going to be discussing who the choreographer is of artificial things. So the picture of below is showing Lucy Bennett. So she is the choreographer for artificial things. She was previously a dancer and has been with the company since 2003. She became the artistic director of the company in 2012. So that's quite important information as if this is one of your questions on your exam, it could ask who the choreographer is and how long she's been with the company so please remember those two dates. Okay so the company who is in charge of the production of artificial things is called the Stop Gap Dance Company. So this is a choreographer led company which employs disabled and non-disabled artists who find innovative ways to collaborate. So their slogan is difference is our means and our method. So if you have previously watched the film before finishing this PowerPoint, you will see that two of the main characters that are in artificial things are both disabled. They're using their equipment that they use on a daily basis to help them choreograph, choreograph this piece. Okay, so Artificial Things first premiered in the UK on the 5th of February 2014. Remember that's a key date for your revision so please make sure you've got that down and highlighted. The whole piece is 20 minutes long, so 20 minutes in duration. Again that is important information so please make sure you also have that down too. Okay, next we are going on to the style of dance that is uh, performed in Artificial Things. You may already have an idea and hopefully you do, okay, but just in case you are still a little bit stuck. So the main styles of the piece is inclusive contemporary dance. Now inclusive means it's able to be performed by anyone. So as you can see in this dance it is disabled people that are primarily the main focus in this dance but the style that they are producing through artificial things can be used and performed by anybody. Okay, throughout the piece of the artificial things, there are four dancers that perform in the section three, two are male and two are female. So right at the beginning, you see two people only, and as it progresses to section three, we see another two people join them. So there are two male and two female. Again, the bits that I've put in bold, please make sure you have down as part of your revision. In previous scenes, there are 
five dancers all together so that is another male but he's not in scene three which is the main bit that you'll be focusing on so you need to just make sure that you remember there are four dancers two male two female but in previous scenes there is an extra one added okay next we are moving on to the stimulus so if you can remember back to when we've um, discussed E of E and within her eyes we always know that there's a stimulus behind each piece of dance okay so the primary image of artificial things as a whole was a snow snow globe covered urban landscape which is an isolated figure perched on a collapsed wheelchair okay so the way we remember the snow covered landscape is we think of a snow globe and we think of one person who is leaning against a wheelchair that is collapsed on the floor the figure is being observed from afar as if you were looking at a snow globe so you might not be able to see all of the features but from afar you can make out that it is a figure that is um, leaning on a wheelchair okay the mysterious paintings also influence the design the costume and the choreographic image which is related in all scenes so that is the middle picture that is currently on your screen so this painting is influences the production of artificial things it takes images from their costumes okay and it uses that image throughout all of the scenes the dancer's personal experiences provide inspiration for the choreographic tasks so the people who are in the dance have bought something from themselves and their personal experiences have helped Lucy Bennett to create the piece that she has created for artificial things okay next we are moving on to the choreographic approach so this is how the choreographer approaches the piece of work and explains and demonstrates how they want to get their stimulus across so Lucy Benny, as we know is a choreographer uses a collaborative approach within all of her choreography stopgap dancers are encouraged to actively contribute to the process throughout the choreographic tasks that Benny that Bennett initiates so all that means is whatever Lucy choreographs it may be adapted or changed from the dancers perspectives and to see how they can make it a little more personal for them so again the bits I've put in bold are the bits that you really need from this PowerPoint much of the material from scene 3 has been driven by Laura Jones's movement in her wheelchair and has been translated by the standing dancers David Wildridge and Amy Butler so everything that the lady does in the wheelchair is then being portrayed again by the standing dancers so they're imitating each other and the standing dancers are taking motivation and ideas from the dancer Laura Jones who is in her wheelchair Okay, next is the choreographic intent so this is what they intend the audience to be able to see from their work so scene three is the final scene of artificial things this is the bit that we are focusing on primarily through our artificial things the undertone of the scene is about the characters coming to terms with life limitations we all live within certain confinements and we are all subject to the gaze of the other so all that means is we all have limitations in life okay and in this scene it is very obvious that the limitations of the dancers are is that they should be confined to their wheelchair now throughout this dance they are showing that regardless of their disability they are still able to portray dancers movements just in their own way The characters acting out this soulful piece 
um, are still constricted within a snow globe that signifies these ideas. So the gaze of others just means if someone was looking into your snow globe, what would they see? We'd all have a different snow globe, okay? And every one of our dancers would look so different. And we discuss this in our lessons, don't we, at school, where we say some of us are better at contemporary, some of us prefer street, okay? And we're all so, so different. So that's what this is focusing on. Within the scene, however, the characters find a resolution by coming together. And as the scene comes to a close, they surrender to the fact that we all have to live with individual regrets. Okay, so this is like you at school, where you are all individual dancers, but when we come together, we all make a good stance with each other, okay, and we all go to the fact that we're all individuals, we all have our strengths, and we all have our areas of improvement. Okay, next we're moving on to the structure of the dance. So, structure means the way in which material is organised to create the whole. So, the whole meaning the whole piece. So, artificial things consist of three different scenes. The first scene is between the characters in the wheelchairs okay so it is the male and the female right in scene one the second scene is exciting but violent where the characters seek liberation from suffering this leads to a tragedy and scene three is the aftermath where the characters are more pensive This is continuing with the structure. So scene three opens with two duets. The first is a ground-based contact work involving a dismantled wheelchair. The second duet was influenced by the dancers improvising around the idea of inviting touch, leading and following. group then unites and uses ground based contact work to stay connected whilst manipulating the dismantled wheelchair so that means when they're moving it around they're manipulating the different parts of the wheelchair the trio of amy david and laura begins to find harmony while dancers with one another and laura's wheelchair Following Laura's lead, they explore the movement of the chair and each dancer takes responsibility for the wheelchair. So throughout the piece that you're going to be watching, you see that each member has an involvement with the wheelchair. It isn't just the person that is in the wheelchair. trio eventually gathers around David who has been watching from the glass cabinet that is displayed on the side. They reenact the portrait of past family photos influenced by the painting that we've previously looked at. They find stillness as if it was frozen in the snow globe. David Tor leaves the group as the music the sunshine of your smile begins and finds a lonely spotlight. He dances a simple solo focusing mainly on facial expression and physical storytelling to the song that his father used to sing when he was young. This solo is a tribute to his father. David returns to the group and is frozen in time with the other characters as the scene comes to a close. Okay, moving on now through this PowerPoint, we're going to be looking at the features of the production. So this will include the lighting, the set, properties, 
costumes and the oral setting. I'll just give you a few minutes in case you want to make a little subtitle. Okay, first we're going to talk about the oral setting. So, the oral setting means an audible accompaniment to the dance such as the music, the words, the song and the natural sound or silence. So we're thinking about what can we hear throughout this piece of work. So, for scene three, Andy Higgs want to create a futuristic atmosphere acknowledging that time has passed and that the old ways had broken. So when you hear the difference in music and that futuristic sound, that's his way of showing that the old ways have gone and there are new beginnings to come. He used the whole of the piano, both inside and out, to create a cold, ambient sound. He also used the sound of the paper snow and incorporated other sound effects such as a distant rumble, wind, footsteps through the snow. Elements of the song, the sunshine of your smile, were mixed into the atmosphere often, surrounding the distortedness or as if it was drifting in over the wind. You might want to find that song on YouTube and just have a listen to that song and see if you understand why they've used it and how it affects the performance. The final section uses the full version of the song. Okay, next we're moving on to costume. This is very self-explanatory. Costume is the clothing worn by the dancers in the performance. So the costumes were designed by Anna Jones. The costumes are a wash of blue and green merging with the backdrop. So nothing really stands out. It's quite neutral, it's quite basic, but it matches the background of the dance. It looks as if paint is running from the garment, which is a reference to being stuck in one of the paintings. Outer garments worn in previous scenes, such as a jacket and jumpers, are removed in this scene to um, depict that time has moved on. Okay, next we're going to look at the lighting. So the definition of lighting is the illumination of the performed area. So for much of the piece, the lighting focuses in one or two spots of the stage. It doesn't actually use the whole of the stage lit up. It opens out in the middle with a blue wash and a warm, cool lighting before closing down to another spot for the final solo. Now, if you think back to the dances we've done, we have looked at a dance which has very similar lighting in this. So, Evie, we only used spotlights in that one. We didn't have the whole stage lit up, okay? We used blue colours. Okay, next is the performance environment. So this is the different settings for the dance. So it's a proscenium arch stage. So the arch or opening that creates the effect of a picture frame and separates the stage 
from the auditorium so all that means is the auditorium will be where the audience are sitting and the stage they I wanted it to look separate so it was as if you were dancing inside of a picture frame so you only had a set space on that stage to be performing Okay, staging and set and props. So the staging set means the presentation of dance in the performing space. And the props means a portable object that is used in a dance, for example, a suitcase. So the set is influenced by several paintings. It consists of paint, a painted heavy backdrop in which the paint looks as if it's running down the canvas. In scenes one and two, this is painted with brightly coloured stripes, which are removed from scene three to create more calm visuals. This scene changes significantly and it changes the mood of the performance. Okay, the vitrine is on the side with a snow drift inside the cabinet. Paper snow is scattered on the ground in a diagonal from the Virtue to Laura who is downstage right. In front of the vitrine there are two stalls and a headless suit on a mannequin's legs perched on the third stall. The dance floor is a light grey and around the edge is a wooden frame reflecting the colour shape and the restrictions. This emphasises the fact that the audience is looking into the snow globe of artificial things. Thank you all for listening to my PowerPoint. Okay, I appreciate I may have gone through things a little bit fast, so please feel free just to go back pause to make sure you've got all your notes okay i didn't want to make the powerpoint too long it's not the same as me discussing it and you asking questions so obviously i've gone through this without any questions being asked but if you have got any questions please email to them to the email address you can see on the screen put dant in the subject title and it will come directly to me and i will reply and answer anything that you may need Please stay safe and hopefully I will see you all very soon. Take care and I look forward to doing a practical with you next week. Bye.